Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Opinion Machine. My name is Killjoy. Today I am going to be talking about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. But before I get into that, I just want to say I hope you've all had a lovely Christmas. We've been taking a little bit of time off since uh, our last video or so. But we are back now. We're going to be doing some more videos coming your way for the end of this month and into New Year. So look forward to that. But yes, let's talk about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The game came out. And I have been playing it non-stop for weeks. You haven't really seen any videos from it yet because some stuff got out of the window. But it's about time I sat and talked about it. And I'm going to have some content coming your way focused on this. Um, this game, without a doubt, is the best game I've played all year. Um, I'm obviously biased because I love Smash Brothers. But we'll get into my reasons for it. But it's also become basically my favourite game of all time. It's Smash Wii U was that. This has now replaced Smash Wii U. And to me, this is like the best game and I will be playing this for years to come, and uh, there, are, there are plenty of reasons for it. So, <clears throat> Smash Ultimate has obviously been breaking records, everyone's loving it. It might have some minor niggles, but let's just go through a bunch of things, uh, and I'm just going to give you my thoughts on a bunch of different parts of the game, and sort of if there's any improvements I'd like to see, or anything I'm disappointed with, all that kind of good stuff. Let's start off with the basic gameplay of this game. Obviously, Smash is a platform fighting game, you run around left to right, on like jumping up and down on platforms, punching and hitting and beating the crap out of each other. And the core gameplay in this game is really, really good. Like, really good. It's not... It's not completely different to Smash Wii U, but there are enough changes here to make it feel like a brand new, uh, completely re-overhauled system. In the sense that when you get hit, you go flying further and faster, so it's a bit harder to combo now. Um, sometimes you die really quick, sometimes it feels like you take forever to die. Uh, the air dodging is kind of similar, it's kind of a cross between both variants now. Uh, it's like melee where you can directional air dodge, but unlike melee you can still act out of it afterwards. And uh, yeah, air dodging has become a much more risky thing. It does help with air movement, so that's always good. Uh, the, the game speed has definitely increased. People are saying it's still not as fast as melee, I'm not so sure. But I think it's uh, at a very, very good speed, it's incredibly fun, feels fast paced enjoyable to play every character in this game feels amazing to play that's the weird thing i've not played a single character in this engine where i'm just like Ugh, this character is horrible to play everyone feels fast and everybody feels fun and i'll get on to what characters more in a bit but yeah i just i've not even the characters i wouldn't even normally consider playing i've had a really good time with and trying to get to grips with them it's just something about this engine that just works really well the idea that they've overhauled it enough to make it feel similar but fresh compared to Smash Wii U. Uh, the game feels a lot more aggressive as well. Um, dodging now, the more times you do it, the uh, less uh, invincibility frames you have and also the fact that you now have more lag if you dodge too much. I find that uh, side dodging or step dodging is much more valuable in this game now. Uh, as well as down smashes. I think down smashes are going to be huge. Because people still dodge around a lot, but down smashes, I find, um, that they're just good to throw out. It feels like a lot of people, well, they, for the most part, depending on the character, you can have fairly decent pressure with them. But I feel like chucking out down smashes is uh, going to be something that we'll see a lot more of. I'm kind of, that's how I'm feeling, but I'm kind of interested to see where that goes. Uh, the ability to dash and then dash cancel into literally any move. So dash cancel into a tilt, a smash. Uh, into a running attack, into a jab, that kind of thing's really cool, gives you more options. Um, the bi biggest thing that I've noticed, and, and I found out why this was, was that a lot of the time I was checking out moves that I wasn't expecting to do. The game actually reads inputs and will buffer inputs, so that means that you can do like a jab, and maybe you, you do a forward smash uh, quick enough, it will do out the jab and then go into the forward smash, or like if you hold down the shield button and things like that. There are times when I, I've gone to do something and then I'll something like air dodge or roll and I'm like, I don't remember doing that, but I've been holding the buttons for it. So that was probably the hardest thing to get used to. I was feeling that it was uh, a bit weird sometimes with the moves going out and whatnot. But oh, honestly, overall, like the, the gameplay feels crisp. It feels really fluid. It feels like I'm always in control of the characters. Um, every character I've played feels good to play as. Even the heavies, which have had significant buffs in this game, feel fun, they feel fast, I'm running around and just like jumping and being able to give these 
do a lot more with the characters basically I mean obviously it buffs a lot of the lighter characters as well it buffs a lot of the other characters with a speed increase but yeah like it feels like the heavies are at the moment and between me Mark and, and Fruity like we're playing a lot more heavies and uh, we are having an absolute blast playing the heavier characters uh, as well as any of the others so yeah I can't say uh, any bad things about this engine it feels really really good to play and i'm super happy that it just feels nice to play and it feels different enough from wii u that it's not like oh it's just smash wii u it feels different it feels like there is that slight there's all these tweaks that just make it feel like a brand new engine talking about characters and because i think this is something that a lot of people have always been really interested in with smash is the characters there are a ridiculous amount of characters and this is literally the best roster in any fighting game of all time um people may disagree on that but look at the names in this look at the third parties look at the first parties this is basically like nintendo's creme de la creme you know there may be a few odd choices but i think that's what kind of makes smash interesting having some crazy choices like that coming down the pipeline and you look at this game you think wow it's amazing you've got everybody back you know you've got ice climbers a snake and wolf and pichu and young link you know you've got all these amazing characters that have returned and that's why this roster is insane you know, I've, I've pretty much played every character at this point, but I can only say maybe five of those characters have I spent a significant amount of time with. The characters that I gravitate towards, like Luigi and Ness, feel amazing. I've now picked up Pichu. I've now picked up K. Rool. Uh, K. Rool was the character I was most excited about. I'm so glad that he's here. He's incredibly fun to play. Like, he's a character that was just straight out of the box. I was just like, this, this is somebody I want to play. This is someone I want to main. So I've been doing that. I've played him mostly. I haven't really played a lot of Ness and Luigi, who were my mains in the last game. I mean, I've played them, and Luigi I've just about started to get to grips with. He now has a tether grab that really keeps screwing with me. Uh, I absolutely hate it. Um, I think he, overall he's a still a lot of fun to play. He's got some changes that uh, I can't really say whether they're good or bad, but like he jumps higher now, and he also moves a bit quicker, I believe. Uh, his down throw lets you combo still at lower percentages, which is the big thing you'd use in Smash Wii U. But he's also, like, his recovery is a bit worse. I don't think his green missile goes quite as far. His uppercut definitely goes more straight up than any other direction. You can't really angle it as much at uh, the small amount that you could in Wii U anyway. So he's definitely easier to kill. And then his down B is Luigi Cyclone. I believe now is intangible and it's a really good move to use when you're trying to land from off the edge or whatever because people always forget that I think his arms or parts of his body you can't hit. However, it, you can only bash it a little bit to like even get any height so you can't really fly with it like you used to. So he, Luigi's kind of like an interesting one. I'm still playing him. I'm still trying to figure out how to get, get good with him again. Um, I'm hoping that I will it will click one day. And it's getting there but I'm just like, I'm a you know, he's been like my main character for the entirety of Smash since I've been playing it, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure about him in this game. And Ness feels really, really powerful. Again, still just kind of learning how to use him. He His PK fire has definitely been buffed because it's much easier to grab people out of it now because it kind of holds them there. His up air is really, really powerful. Like, very much enjoying Ness. P2I jokingly was kept saying to the other guys that I'm definitely going to main him. And actually, to be honest, Pichu's really good in this game. He's a lot of fun. He's impossibly hard to hit. Yes, he dies super quick, but you can rack up damage on people really easily if you know how to he's got some good forward air combos short hop forward air grabs he plays really really fun i really like him his skull bash is still ridiculously powerful still one of the best moves in the game his recovery is really good like a lot of fun in terms of the other newcomers though like simon and richter amazing i really 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 like simon and richter i thought there was more changes uh, more differences between them but it seems like there's like hardly any uh, which is fine because it just means pick whoever you prefer. But I think they're both really good characters. I enjoy playing them both. Uh, the, the whole projectile based thing is great. Um, they, they Some of their moves are a bit hard to land because it, it's a whip. It's very thin. But awesome fun. Like Great character. Glad they're in the game. Uh, Isabel, surprisingly. I was not excited for her at all. But she is actually a lot of fun. Uh, the fishing rod. Uh, is just You just mess with people with that thing. Because it's got such a long range for a grab on it. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, not much more to say about her though, like, she's she's fun, that's about what I'm say. Incineroar is a character who I didn't expect to play him much at all, and I've actually played some really fun games with him. His throws and his, just like, his noises he makes and things are just hilarious. His recovery is terrible, but playing him and trying to land people on the ropes is a lot of fun. Very, 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 very enjoyable. Ridley is also a really good character. 
However, I do think you have to kind of like spend some time with Ridley. Unlike K. Rool, who, who when you first play him feels broken as anything, Ridley feels much more like he's got more finesse and more technical ability behind him. But I feel like in the right hands, you can do a ton of damage with Ridley very quickly. Uh, so I'm looking forward to putting more time into him. Inkling is probably the only newcomer that I really haven't spent a lot of time with. I find Inkling really hard to use. And I think I just need to spend more time, learn what the moves are properly, and learn how to ink people more efficiently. Because I think Inkling is good. I just never seem to hit with anything apart from the bombs. Uh, I find the aerials I still haven't properly learned, apart from maybe up air. Uh, just like, figuring out Inkling, I don't think Inkling is particularly difficult. I just, for some reason, struggled really hard. Whereas, like, K. Rule has very obvious moves. Like, K. Rule. You up tilt and he does like a big punch, or you down tilt and he stamps. Like his move set feels quite simple, whereas Inkling, I feel like it's figuring out like what combos into what and what works, and using all the different attacks in certain ways. But I think Inkling has is very good. I think Inkling is a really good addition to the game. I'm trying to think if there is any other. Oh, Ken, Ken. Now Ken is an interesting one. Ken for me is a character who I very much enjoy playing, but I am utterly bad with. Uh, I have died so many times <laughs> trying to use Ken. I'm trying to learn how to combo with him because he's all about the combos. He's all about cancelling into other moves, setting those moves up, cancelling into it, and just racking up the damage. Unlike Ryu, who is more about single hits and hitting hard. Like, he does have combos, but Ryu hits harder, I think, and Ken's all about those, the, setting those moves up. He is by, like, even though he's an Echo Fighter, he's so different to Ryu in a lot of ways that I, I find it even calling him an echo fighter is a bit loosey to me he's like a brand new character i think he's a lot of fun he's very very good in terms of the other echoes you got you got uh, daisy i haven't really played her maybe like played her once don't think there's much difference between her and peach but not a big peach main but it's fun again fun to play dark samus is a lot of fun and i've enjoyed playing dark samus and regular samus in this game she definitely feels more floaty i need to like figure out if that's completely true but she definitely feels more floaty if there aren't any other um, differences, she's still a lot of fun to play because of the way she looks and the way that she moves. She's very, like, just very cool. Very good character. And then Krom. Krom and Roy. So Roy is a character who I used to main a shit ton in the last game. I'm playing Roy a lot in this game, and Roy is amazing. Krom <laughs> is, like, also, also really good. And being able to have Roy's hitbox throughout his entire sword, or, like, the fact he's got consistent damage... It's kind of nuts, and considering how quick Krom is, it's like, whew. His recovery is pretty naff. You only have to go off the stage once, hit him, and he's not getting back on. However, doing that in the first place is quite hard. He, he hits pretty hard. It's, it's nuts. Like, awesome that he's here. Like, enjoying Krom a lot. I will still stick with Roy because his recovery is just a little bit better. And I still like the fact that Roy rewards you for getting right up in someone's face. I won a few online matches with that, so very happy <clears throat> overall like the entire roster is a lot of fun like being able to play a snake again and young link and toon link in this game feels much better and normal link and mario mario seems great dr mario seems amazing like it's actually nuts like how t every character just feels so much fun to play like i'm enjoying this so much at the moment like this game it still feels i'm 100 hours in and it still feels just as enjoyable to play i'm not bored of it yet so absolutely great loving it a lot uh, the levels the levels in this are fantastic they've all had a massive overhaul some have been tweaked to be better okay there's only four new levels currently uh but all four of those levels are great you've got castlevania the dracula castle level which is super fan service uh to the best it's a fun level i like the way the items spawn on it the different characters appear the music is so good like all of the remixes that added to this and things are amazing uh, Moray Towers is the Splatoon one. Again, a lot of fun. Works really well with Inkling if you've got the roller. Really cool idea that you have like the different slopes. Again, fantastic music. Uh, we've got um, Mario Odyssey, haven't we? We've got the Mario Odyssey level. So, New Donk City Hall. That is also a lot of fun. I'm very much enjoying that one. I kind of like the way it goes up the building. Music also, again, incredible. Uh, very nice visuals on that stage too. And then lastly, you've got Great Plateau Tower. Probably my least favourite of the new levels, not to say that I don't like it, because it still looks beautiful. It's just a bit boring, <laughs> I think, compared to the other three stages. But, I will say, I still enjoy playing on it, I still get to hear the awesome Zelda music from that game. It's amazing, I love it. And in terms of all the returning stages, well, straight off the bat, when we first got the one, I first got it, 
the first stage that we played on was uh, Mushroom Kingdom from uh, Smash Bros. 64 to the one where it's got the two platforms in the middle and the pipes you can go down. My favourite level of all time is now returned, looking better than ever. I had chills down my spine playing that level for the first time in so long. I love it. I am absolutely obsessed with that level. It's my favourite level in the entire series, so I couldn't be happier that it's back. In terms of all the other choices, it's incredible. It's amazing the stages in here. I do hope, however, they will add the other ones later on. But honestly, the stages that are here, like this is like the best selection. I know that there may be a couple of duffers in there, like Wily's Castle and Packland, that people aren't a massive fan of. But I don't mind them so much because now they don't come up that often. But I've never really hated those stages. The one stage I did very much dislike back in Melee was Brinstar Depths. I hated that stage. However, it is a lot more playable now and you can grab way more of the edges. So it makes it a bit more easy if you get stuck somewhere. It's still a pain in the ass that stage, but I I'm still enjoying it. Yeah, there isn't a single level in this that I don't like playing on. Uh, I know the other guys might have different opinions on that, but being able to essentially play on you know 90% of the levels in the entire series is incredible and the, the way that they've redone some of them like uh, temple looks amazing a lot of the melee stages do look pretty awesome so do the same with the brawl ones actually a lot of the brawl stages look amazing I'm just so happy that the, the ones that they've added here are some of the best the series has ever seen and I like I said want to see the rest of the stages regardless of how similar they are added to this game so we'll see if that ever happens in the future Moving on though from that, let's talk about classic mode. Um, so what the first mode in this classic mode, classic mode is really good, like for the most part, because it's they're short and they're not overly difficult. Now I do have some gripes with the difficulty in it, but I've been enjoying it. I've played, I've got about 18 left to do, and it's great. You just pick somebody. They have a theme. Uh, like if you pick, pick Mario, you just fight in characters. It's like let's go. I think you're working your way through Mushroom Kingdom, and then you get to Bowser as the final boss, uh, which is really, really cool. And then, like, if you play Simon and Richter, they're kind of, um, I think Richter's fighting only Echo Fighters. I think that's kind of how his works. And then you fight Dracula at the end. So it's cool that they've mixed it up. So most characters will still fight Master and Crazy Hand. But you also have, uh, Dra spoilers, by the way, uh, Dracula to fight. You also have Marx. You have uh, Gallium. You have Giga Bowser, you have Ganon, um, and Raphaelos as well. I think those are the main like boss characters, but sometimes you'll fight like just a normal character at the end, which is really cool. The way that they've done that, which I enjoy that. Like the fact that you're, I think if you play as uh, Bowser, you fight Mario at the end. When you kill Mario, you fight Metal Mario, which I thought was really cool and a really good callback to the original Smash, where you have the Metal Mario fight. I was like, that's awesome. And they're all different, like, they're all different. They all have a theme, like I said. Some are stronger than others. Wolf's is really fun, because you fight all the returning characters, and then Gallium right at the end, uh, which is a boss from Brawl. Uh, Luigi's is fun, because you fight, like, all nightmarish kind of things, and you fight Dracula. Um, P2, you fight only small characters. Like, there's so many of them. Like, it's awesome. A lot of the Fire Emblem ones revolve around you fighting, like, I can't remember who it is, like, Marth or Roy, you just fight other sword fighters and stuff. So, yeah, all in all, like, very much enjoying it. Very quick. Very, like, you know, they probably take, like, 15 minutes, about that, like, a chunk. So, you can do about four in an hour, maybe, maybe five, depending on how good you are at it. But my only gripe with Classic Mode is when you get into a team battle. So, the way that, when, when you start this up, you have a mural that you move up and down, which allows you to pick the difficulty so this, the starting difficulty you can pick on at the highest point is 5.0 when you pick 5.0 every time the better you do in a battle the more you go up so the highest i think you can go up is 0.1 so you can go from 5 to 6 but a lot of the time you'll go from like you know 0.8 so you'll get eight points to it and by the end of it you can be like very pretty close to nine if at any point when you're close to nine you get a team battle and it's 1v3 it feels incredibly unfair a lot of the time depending on the stage and who you're fighting against and it's very frustrating with certain characters when you are trying to play it and then you just die because you didn't really have much of a chance to do anything um this happened a few times it's not with every single one because sometimes it's just one on ones but i definitely find that that needs tweaking either you need to change the difficulty in that or you just have less ai opponents because as soon as it's 1v3 and you're on nine they're ruthless Unless they're attacking each other as well, it's really difficult to deal with. Now, I've done some, and I think you definitely fly, don't fly as far in this. But you can easily get stitched up quite hard. 
And it's happened a few times. Sometimes I'll die twice in a level. And it is frustrating because it drops the difficulty down quite significantly if that happens to you. It makes it very hard for you to get like a 9.9 .9 or anything or anything into the 9s uh, if that happens. And the same goes for Master and Crazy Hand. Master and Crazy Hand, uh, obviously, I don't know how the moves are picked. I assume they're picked at random or certain intervals during the fight. But sometimes Master and Crazy Hand can just open up with uh, horrendous attacks that do not, they make it really hard to avoid. Like, most of the attacks are not too bad. They don't, sometimes you get long phases where they won't do anything. But as soon as it gets onto the nine point plus, they can be brutal. And I, especially with Little Mac, I, I think I died twice doing that. It was just like, I got stitched up. Like sometimes Master Hand will just slap across the screen and it's got very little wind up lag on it. So you, sometimes you just die. Uh, same with the one that slams down. Certain moves can kill you really quickly. And it's kind of annoying. Um, out of all the boss fights, I think you, they're not necessarily the hardest because you can, they, have a, they pretty much follow a similar pattern, but like if, they, if one of them decides to do like finger lasers, which is one of their moves, and the other one decides to swipe across the screen, the likelihood is you've been caught in the lasers, you're just going to get smacked and there's nothing you can do about it. And they've made lasers way more powerful, which makes it like really hard to get out of that move. Like if you don't dodge it, you're getting shot. And then you've got like obviously their joint moves, which like double finger lasers or the, like the zapping the floor and... There's so much stuff that they can do, uh, and if you, I mean, obviously you've got to learn their moves. They, they've got new moves in this, which I thought was amazing. But sometimes they just come out in a really horrendous combination that you just can't do anything about. Um, uh, and especially with the lighter characters like Little Mac or someone like Pichu, you don't stand a chance. You're just dead, and, it, and that's frustrating. That's like the only thing with classic modes. Sometimes that can be annoying. Out of all the other bosses, though, I mean, Raphalos is pretty straightforward. Dracula can be a nightmare because of his second phase. Um, somebody can just smack you off the screen, like you, you can't do anything about it. It's just if you get comboed, that's it, you're dead. Um, Giga Bowser is pretty straightforward. He doesn't seem too difficult. Marx is probably the hardest one for me because I just hardly ever fight against him. So I think now I know all his different moves, but he has a weird move set. So learning him is kind of the hardest. Uh, Gallium's pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to say easy. Like I just, I it's just telegraphs his moves really obviously so it's kind of easy to avoid them Ganon is a bit of a pain sometimes because with Ganon you have to hit him in the tail um, so he can be a nightmare sometimes you're trying to jump over him but his sword swings are so big they just clap you anyway and I think that's it like pretty much like all the boss fights are difficult in some way but definitely in an order I would probably put maybe maybe for me like Mark, Dracula, Master Hand, Crazy Hand and the rest are much easier um, it just depends, like I said, it depends on what moves get thrown out and who you're playing as. But all in all, like, very, uh, very much enjoying Classic Mode. I think Classic Mode is a good lot of fun. And I'm glad that it's gone back to the way that this sort of stage by stage way, rather than having the whole, um, thing that they did with Wii U with the board and you kind of like choose your fights and stuff. I think that was, that was too much randomness in that. World of Light. Let's talk about World of Light because I know that World of Light got a lot of hate from a lot of people where they were like, it's a good thing but it overstays its welcome. Now, spoilers by the way because I'm going to go into all this. World of Light for me was incredibly enjoyable and at no point did I get bored during it. The reason why is because all the time I was exploring that map, I was just like, what's over here, what's over here, what's over here? And I was constantly surprised by things. It was like, oh, I'm in a Metal Gear Solid base. Or I'm in the, flying around the world, like fighting Street Fighter characters. Or my first personal favorite was when I ended up doing the first world map of Donkey Kong Country. I was like, what is this? That is madness. And yeah, I absolutely loved it. Like the way that it works is you go around this map, you collect these spirits, and each one acts as like an event match fight. Okay, event match isn't back. Um, but event matches are essentially what you do and you collect spirits and they all have different abilities and they can help you fight in these fights and nullify certain things but then you do the entirety of the first map so i 100 percented it and then you, you fight uh galim and then you've got another map and now you're in a dark realm because you're like well i haven't got all the characters yet and then suddenly you you go around and then you're in dracula's castle and one and then you're doing like some warped spacing for kirby and then you're in like the dark world for hyrule and it's just it's just even though a lot of people were complaining that, like, ah, oh, you know, overstays its welcome, there's too many things, uh, too many matches that are too similar, or you're, you know, just fighting loads of these matches, event match type things. I really enjoyed exploring the maps. I 
put 12, 15 hours into it. Like, I went for it pretty quickly. And I 100%ed the whole thing. And then after that whole Dark World thing, you get to, like, the final assault. And, you know, you've got the map going back. Every time you beat so many Dark, like, Dark Rons guys, who's the other boss, um, the, the, sh the, pat the it shifts to, like, the light side. And then suddenly that their spirits are more powerful. And you keep doing this between this war. And then you get to fight Master and Crazy Hand, who then suddenly, like, snap out of their control. And then one of the coolest things happened, which I was not expecting. I hadn't spoiled this for myself. I was not expecting this at all. You actually get to play as Master Hand. You get to use Master Hand, and you get to beat the ever-living snot out of, like, about 50 different, like, light and dark versions of the other characters. And the best thing about it is that his moves come out so fast. So, like, they've sped him up and made him really fun to play. And you've got B button moves, and you've got the A button moves, and you get to use all, all the things. You get to like do the click, you can do like a slap, a slap down, the gunshots, chuck the spiky balls. You've got so much, like the spinning finger part of it. Like there are so many cool moves. You don't get every single move as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong because I've only done it once, but it was such a surprise. And it made that entire journey worth it for that. And then not only that, you do that fight. You then have a base essentially three fights that you can do. You can fight Darkon, you can fight both of them, or you can fight Galeem. Now, me being me, I was like, well, I'm t clearly going to go down the middle path because I want to fight both of them. But there are three endings. Two of them are bad. <laughs> the middle one's good. And the last bit's really fun because you're climbing up like a... Uh, the screen's scrolling up. You're climbing up to these different areas to, to eventually get to Darkon and Galeem. And they're trying to attack you while they're fighting each other, and then you're fighting these different like light and dark versions of characters, and then eventually you get to them and you beat both of them, and it's like that was awesome. I don't really compare it to Subspace from Brawl because they're very different. There weren't enough cutscenes in this, okay, that's fair enough. However, I had an absolute blast playing for it. I don't know if I would want to play for it again anytime soon. At least I wouldn't try to hundred percent it. But I very much enjoyed playing it. I thought the game was an absolute blast. It was cool. Look, the things that they were trying to do with this game. They had all these different extra bits and bobs. World of Light was great. And I think people are either going to love it or they're going to hate it. Some people are going to think, oh, this is too long. It keeps going and going and going. But for me, I had an absolute blast with it. I liked what I wanted to know what was going on with the story. And I wanted to see this end part. And I wasn't disappointed. I very much enjoyed it. And I hope that other people get the same sort of enjoyment that I did out of it because it was it was enjoyable there was also like spirit board as part of the um, spirits mode with this which is kind of like event just event matches and stuff and that's pretty fun too like I've spent time in there uh, just getting some of the spirits but some of those battles are really tough and you need to have like the right setup to do it but it's still fun. It's cool that the spirit board is there you basically pick the ones you want to fight you fight them you then have like a little mini game and you get the spirit and then you can, and that's a good way of getting it. And generally speaking, the ones that appear up will be ones that you need, I think. Excuse me. That's what I've seen so far. Um, then you get like abilities to like fill it up and different like items that help you find the ones that you want and rematch certain ones. But yeah, I, I'm enjoying the whole spirits thing. It's a shame that trophies aren't back, but I kind of understand it with the amount that's in here. And you know, I've got my, I'm you know almost close to getting 1,100 spirits out of almost 300. So I'm getting near the end now of getting them all. And the cool thing about spirits is you can get them from World of Light, you can get them from Spirit Board, you can buy them from the shops, you can buy them from the uh, from the spirit shops, or you can buy them from the actual shop in the vault like this, and you can collect them from like classic mode. It's awesome. They give you loads of different ways of getting them, and they have like a smash of is being updated and having all these events going on, so certain ones appear more often as well, which is fun. Like it's great. Loads, of, loads, and loads, and loads, and loads, and loads of ways of getting them, so it doesn't make it feel too grindy. And then there's the online mode. Now, online got a lot of flack to start with, and I remember this because people were like, oh, the online mode is, like, sucks. But I heard lots of mixed things. I heard people saying, no, the online's really, really good, it's flawless. Other people saying it sucked. For me, and I can only speak from what I have played a bit, I have had an amazing experience with the online mode. I may have had one match that lagged out partway through, but then it was fine. And a couple of matches that a little bit more input lag than I would like. But other than that, all of my matches have felt like I've been playing offline. They've all felt really good, and I and the nice thing is I found that the matchmaking has always matched me up with people that are similar skill level. I 
definitely think there could be some improvements to it and I hopefully will see that but I think just the way my preferences are set up when I play online I play 1v1 and I play with items off and then I just have it so that it's free stocks and then yeah so it's free stocks and uh, five minutes and now I choose that as preferred rules to do that and I very much enjoy the fact that I can play the game that way and most of the time the matchmaking is matched me up with really good um, other people that playing other similar similar fights a lot of them uh, might be more time or less stocks but you know honestly like it's fine as long as it's similar to the reason why I play with items off and 1v1 is to try and reduce any kind of lag that could potentially happen and I think you know I've been enjoying it I think it's really fun and I think the online mode is definitely definitely worth people's time I just it's a shame that it's obviously not working for everybody they have patched it a couple of times which I think has made it better so hopefully we'll see that keep improving and Nintendo keep adding options because I think that's the one thing the online needs it needs more options um, and I think especially with the fact that you can't play an online tournament anymore which is kind of it's weird that you can do an offline one but not online I, it needs that and also the fact that you don't have that many options in terms of what you can do like you're very limited with the battle arenas to like eight people I believe um, which feels weird. I feel like you should be able to at least have like maybe 16, 32, something like that in there so that people can enjoy more of playing with bigger groups, bigger parties of people. But I would say from my personal experience, the online has been good and I've been enjoying it and I've played against some really fun competitors. So take that as you will. Your mileage may vary depending on where you are and who you are and what you're playing. Um, that's mainly most of the main points of the game I want to make. Um, in terms of anything else, probably one the other big thing that has been a huge huge delight of this game is the soundtrack i don't care what anyone says this has the best soundtrack of any game whether that's music from other games or remixes or whatever this game has the best soundtrack and i don't really think you can argue that mainly because it's just made up of incredible pieces of music from all different games and it has its own incredible music like the main theme and the music that's used in world of light and I love it. I think the game is fucking phenomenal with this soundtrack. It's so good. The Gangplank Galleon remix that they've added to this game for Donkey Kong or for K. Rules theme tune is like one of the best pieces of video game music I have ever heard and one of the best remixes I've ever heard. But not only did that, they surprised me with things they added like Snakey Chanty from Donkey Kong Country 2. What an incredible remix of that as well. And then on top of that, we've got like Ice Cave Chant, the original version from Donkey Kong Country. And we've got uh, Crocodile Catastrophe, which is a, the, the boss fight from the second game. And then there's a Super Mario Bros. free ground theme remix, which is incredible. A brand new Pilot Wings remix. Like, all of the new music in this game is just being top notch. Even tracks that I'm not particularly fond of, like there was one for um, Animal Crossing. I think it's the Happy Home Designer one. It's just like this rock version of it. It's just amazing. The whole game, like, soundtrack is just incredible. And there's not one... I mean, you've got, obviously, the, all the music from Wii U. you pretty much got all the music from Melee and all of it from Brawl and all that stuff. But, honestly, like, I can't fault this soundtrack. Like, being able to just sit there for hours and picking through the tracks and how often I want them to play is something I never thought that I ever really wanted until Brawl came around. And now that they just keep expanding on it, it's just insane. Absolutely insane. And I love it. I love it so much. Other than that, you've got like you have All Star Smash and things, uh, Chrome Smash, and you know you've got a few modes for that kind of multi-man melee sort of style of um, fights. It's like a side mode. You've got a cool training level that they've added in. You have uh, Smash Down and uh, Squad Strike, which are two new modes. Uh, I've played Smash Down once, I think. Squad Strike, on the other hand, I've played a few times and it's very, very good. A lot of what's in this game I enjoy. I think the content in terms of is, is pretty much where it needs to be and the options and stuff are there like just there's so many small changes to this game like being able to save a rule set and being able to tweak things and it's just oh it's just nuts like the crazy things you can do so like you can probably tell from just me talking about this in this video that like I am absolutely obsessed with this game I love it it's the best thing I've ever played I just couldn't be happier with it there obviously are things I want to see added to the game uh, like we don't have home run contests, we don't have break the targets, we don't have board the platforms, but that hasn't really been around for for a while. And I do hope to see, you know, if Nintendo hears the feedback about that, I hope that they add that stuff in as part of the fighter passes or as part of some free DLC. That'd be pretty cool. That would go a long way 
Um, you know, these aren't particularly like modes that you're going to play a lot of, but I always like to tar break the targets. I always like uh, home run contests. It's kind of just like messing around and playing with friends and just sort of doing a bit of a side mode uh, on the side. I mean, board the platforms would be really cool, but I really don't see that coming back. Um, I, you know, I, I'm going to talk about other features and things uh, that I would like to see added to the game in another discussion. Uh, but I will save that for a later time. I, I hope you've enjoyed listening to me blab on for a good half an hour talking about uh, my thoughts on Smash. I mean, you can call this a review if you want. If I'm not going to give it a score, but like honestly, I, I couldn't be happier with this game. I'm, I'm loving every second of it. I've played 1v1s. I've played five-player matches. I'm just so happy that the game has turned out to be as good as it has, and, and I can't say enough good things about it. Is it a perfect game? No, but then no Smash game is. But is it is it now my favourite game? Absolutely. And this will be my favourite game until something else comes along, probably the next Smash game in the future. But that's going to be it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this. If you like the video, hit like. If you want to get involved in the discussion, feel free to leave a comment below. Obviously hit subscribe because I'm going to be doing more content with, as well as other things coming your way pretty soon. But until next time, I will see you then.